Welcome to the Whittier Warriors Ask Coach video series. Uh, we've decided to make this new video series of short videos, and I'm going to try to stick to that. We'll see. Um, the topics are basically common questions that we get asked about running, uh, mostly by our parents, by our kids as well, um, but really it applies to, for the general public as well. So we'll post this on our websites. Enjoy. Give us feedback on the videos. Uh, and more importantly, give us ideas in terms of uh, new videos, you know, questions that we can answer. So what the first one's going to be, as you can see on the screen, shoes, shoes, and more shoes, right? And we will try to get this pretty quickly. Two slides only, I promise. First one is choosing the right shoe for you. So we get this question a lot, like, you know, I've often heard, like, what's the best shoe? And I want to get the, you know, the shoe that's going to make me really fast and things like that. Um, we'll start off with saying get a quality shoe. And what I mean by that is don't get a gym shoe. Don't get a walk, you know, shoe that's meant for walking, like a walking shoe or a cross training. CrossFit is very popular now. There's a lot of shoes out there. Uh, don't use a sneaker of any type. Even if you're just getting started, you want to get started literally on the right foot, right? No pun intended there. Um, but the idea is go out and get a good quality shoe. Now, now that all depends on your intentions, right? If you're, if you're planning on running five miles a week to start, right? And you're kind of going to mix in walking and things like that, then sure, go to Big Five, get yourself a $39.99 shoe. That should be fine for the first few months while you kind of get into it. But make sure it's a running shoe and not some other type of shoe. Um, you know, eventually you want to get to a running shoe store and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but support your local running shoe store. They will, you know, get you into the right shoe for you. The next one is, you know, is there a number one best running shoe in the world? And I want to get that one. There isn't, there's no such thing, right? No matter who tells you how many commercials you watch from Nike or so on, there is the best shoe for you. And that's going to vary on the person. So you'll talk to devoted runners that have been running their entire lives. Each one will have a favorite shoe. And for them, that is the best shoe for them. Um, and for you, you'll eventually find the right one as well. And it's some trial and error. Um, there is some science behind it as well. Uh, comfort, believe it or not, is a big part of choosing a running shoe. It's not just kind of a science and how fast will it make me and so on. Remember, the running shoes you're getting for the most part are trainers. They're meant to protect you from getting injured during training so you can train more and become faster. They themselves won't make you a lot faster unless we're talking about some high tech stuff, right? Um, but go out and get fitted, right? Because at the end of the day, how they feel and if it's the right shoe for you can be determined by yourself and by someone that knows running shoes. So here's where I'll promote local running shops, support them, go out there, go out there in person, don't shop online. I know right now it's difficult, but go out there and get a good running shoe fit. They will have you run. They'll see how your foot pronates. They'll you know, decide whether you're a neutral or support shoe. Um, and long story short, we won't get into a lot of detail here, but it's how your shoe pronates or rotates in as you're running, right? That's normal. As we walk and run, most people rotate in. Some don't, but they're, it's a rare exception. Um, on For neutral runners, your rotation in is, is a slight rotation. Not a big deal. You'll wear a neutral shoe. But those of you that really collapse in, for example, myself, we need a support shoe. It's going to have kind of more denser material on the inside of the shoe, and it'll hold you from rotating too far in and causing other forms of injury, knee injuries, shin splints, uh, and even hip injuries. Um, so again, you want to be fitted. They want to watch you run, and they'll tell you your neutral support. And then within that, you'll have a ton of brands and choices uh, in price range, ranges even to choose from. So it's a great thing to go and support your local running shoe store. I won't lie, they're going to be a little more pricey than maybe getting them online, but definitely go out there, make sure you get yourself in the right shoes. Um, trail shoes, we get asked all the time, hey coach, can I get some trail shoes? They look really cool, they're bright colors. <laughs> um, unless you're going to be running on trails on a regular basis, meaning every day, don't get a trail shoe. You wear those on the road, they'll wear out very, very quickly. They're not meant to support you in the right ways. They don't have enough cushioning. They're they're really meant for more grip and traction than they are for the support and cushioning, which is two different avenues. So if you're gonna run in trail shoes, get trail shoes. If you're gonna run on the road, get road shoes. Um, if you're gonna do both, get both, right? I know it's a little more expensive, but you really should do it instead of trying to guess the 40, 60 split on the time you'll spend on, on both. Um, for racing flats, this is you know a, a big question too. Should I get my kid or should I get myself a racing flat for races? If you're brand new to running, don't. Um, even if you go run a local 5k, even a 10k, uh, or anything like that, just stick to your training shoes, right? The idea is to finish, the idea is to get comfortable racing, even if you are pushing the pace. The advantage in terms of seconds faster is relatively small. 
uh, get yourself comfortable with racing first before you invest in a, in a spike or flat. With our kids, we tell them, you know, first year or so, don't worry about it. As they get older, as they get into the 10, 11, 12, 13 year old range, yeah, let's get you into some spikes and some flats. Uh, obviously, at the high school level, you'll need them and so on. Um, but it all has to do with experience. Um, you know, granted, yes, they're going to be lighter and they're going to be faster <clears throat> by very little, right? But they are. But what you're giving up to exchange for that speed uh, and traction and so on is the support and cushioning that the trainer will provide, right? So you want to make sure that you're fit and ready to go and are in the middle of experiencing any injuries when you do wear those for races and only wear them for races. Do not train in those, please. Sometimes occasionally on speed workouts, but for the most part, you will wear your trainers for all types of training. All right. Uh, running shoes, making them last, and how long do they last? So first of all, run on the proper surface. We already talked about that. Trail shoes are for trails. Road shoes are for the road. Uh, try not to mix them up as much as possible. It's not always possible. You'll be running through a park sometimes. You're not going to stop and change your shoes. But for the most part, you know, keep it in line. Uh, and dry them out. If it rains, doesn't rain a lot around here, but if it does, dry them out. Um, good method of doing that because they do take a long time to dry. Sometimes they won't dry overnight. Take the insoles out. Put newspaper, stuff it with newspaper overnight. It'll absorb a lot of the moisture. Uh, other people get like a hair dryer and stick out the shoes. Not the best bet, but if you're running out of time, you need them to dry. Sometimes you want to do that. Just avoid doing that, especially with the really high heat on those. Put them on a lower heat. Um, but yeah, stick to the newspaper, much better method. Clean them. Believe it or not, little things like mud and dirt stuck to the outside, especially the top, will begin to wear as, as you're running. It's kind of friction going back and forth, that mud that's stuck on there, and it will begin to wear the outside of the shoe much quicker. Um, and last but not least is if you can afford this, run in two pairs of shoes. So Monday you wear pair number one, Tuesday you wear pair number two, Wednesday you go back to pair number one. Uh, reason for this is it takes 36 hours for the cushioning inside your shoe, that midsole to decompress. Meaning after 24 hours, if you run every day, right? it's not going to be fully decompressed, meaning you're pounding it harder and harder and harder, and eventually you will wear it much quicker. So two pairs of shoes worn alternating will last longer than two pairs of shoes worn one full time and then the other one after that full time. So you'll gain some miles, not a lot. Now, how much and how long do they last? That's the next point. 300 to 350 miles, and that is it. Don't run them 500 miles. Don't run them 600 miles. Do not follow what they say in the little brochure that the shoes came with. I've seen some of those things say 800 miles, 300 to 350 miles, and that is it. Um, do not go by time. People say, coach, but I've only had them for a month and a half. Sure, but if you're running 75 miles a week, they're gone, right? Um, or the opposite, right? I've had these for six months. Should I get new shoes? I don't know. It depends. If you've only been running two miles a week, no, you're fine, <laughs> right? Now, there's a limit to that. If you have a shoe sitting around, a running shoe, and you have not used for a very long time, then that shoe needs to go, right? In two, three years, and even though you haven't used it, you shouldn't just put it on and start running. That's probably all dried up. It's gonna be hard as a rock. It's not gonna give you the support and cushioning that you need. Don't judge based on looks alone. So never look at a shoe. It could be perfectly clean. You took care of it, you washed it. You don't tend to prone it a lot or slip a lot when you run. So the, the sole looks great. If it's got the 300, 350 miles, it's done. <clears throat> all right, and last but not least, um, go by feel as well uh, as runners, especially if you're not new and you've had time running, um, you know, and the kids, you know, parents, they'll tell you the same thing. If they're feeling like they're just hitting that concrete, they're feeling flat on the run, there's no more bounce in their steps. It's a good time to maybe take a look. Hey, when did we buy this? How many miles do they think they have? Um, aches and pains, not necessarily injuries, but aches and pains that are not normal. You know, maybe it's a five mile run that usually is super easy. And now it feels like you just got beat up on the run. Good chance the shoes wearing out. Sometimes shoes just like anything else comes a little defective, they don't last as long, so go by that as well. Excessive wear, not a little wear, some wear is normal on a running shoe, but excessive wear on the, on the sole. Uh, probably should be looking at uh, your running form as well, but that's another video. Um, but that's another reason to kind of look at the shoe and make sure that it's still good. All right, folks, hopefully that helps. Uh, that's the information on running shoes. Happy runnings, and we'll see you at the next video. Thank you.